The first woman to be confirmed by the Senate as Deputy Secretary of Defense is breaking barriers at the Pentagon. In her first TV interview since starting her new role, Kathleen Hicks sat down exclusively with senior investigative correspondent Catherine Herridge. They discussed how she's trying to bring about change at the Department of Defense. If you look at these um, pictures on the wall... He's Kathleen Hicks, who first walked these hallways as a Pentagon intern in 1993, knows how to navigate the building and the bureaucracy. Did you ever imagine you would be sitting in the press briefing room as the first woman to be the deputy secretary? I would be lying if I said I expected to be here. And now that she's here, Hicks said she will open doors. A big priority area for the president and the secretary and I to make sure... You know, women in uniform, for instance, are well represented at the senior most levels. For those of us on the civilian side to make sure that women are represented throughout the highest ranks of the civilian, uh, both the career and the political appointee course. Two days after the inauguration, Hicks's boss, Lloyd Austin, was sworn in, making him the first black defense secretary in U.S. history. What does this representation mean to the force? Yeah, well, I think representation absolutely matters. It demonstrates uh, both the, the breadth of capacity that the United States has, this incredible talent pool that no nation, whether it's China or Russia or any other, could match uh, when we bring our full talents to bear. Is China outpacing the U.S.? We are very challenged by China. There are certain uh, areas where the Chinese are absolutely demonstrating a high degree of proficiency and investment. No question in your mind that China is the single greatest national security threat to the U.S.? Over the long term, absolutely. We've seen four years where the Russians have really messed with our system. So what's it going to take? to make the Russian president back off? Well, certainly on the cyber front, we've seen very little price paid by the, by the Russians for continued election meddling and cyber attacks against, um, against the U.S. government. There must be a price to be paid, and we should anticipate that the president will be coming out with that in the next several weeks. In March, Hicks established the Deputies Workforce Council to tackle issues ranging from diversity and sexual assault to extremism. After the Capitol riots, did rooting out extremism take on new urgency? I think what the January 6th uh, attack and insurrection attempt really highlighted is the degree to which we're seeing uh, it, the term extremism expand um, and encompass a wider range of uh, approaches that really challenge the U.S. military to ensure that its force is uh, living by the oath that we all take to the Constitution. At least 37 of those arrested are current or former military members. In February, Secretary Austin ordered a force-wide review to address extremism. And that 60-day review continues through Sunday, so we're just finishing up. We're going to capture the lessons learned after that. But I think what we're understanding first is that uh, idea that if this is really about what we commit to within the those who take the oath of office, right? So the question is whether or not we're all living up to those ideals that we set for ourselves to be focused and coherent, to be ready as a force and not to let divisions among us um, become uh, sources of strain to our readiness. And what's the next step? Next step is uh, looking at our insider threat program more systematically. Do we have the right program in place? Looking at data sharing across the uh, investigative services. Uh, so, for instance, with the FBI and others, we're going to look at our recruiting processes. What will the Biden administration do to end sexual assault and sexual harassment in the military? We've started an a independent review commission, genuinely independent of the department comprised of experts um, in the field. And they're taking a hard look right now at issues of accountability, at issues of prevention. The Deputies Workforce Council is an ambitious effort to address longstanding issues and bring about meaningful change. How do you do that? without leaving the force feeling beaten down. Change management is incredibly difficult for exactly this reason. The first thing is to always affirm that we have an amazing workforce. And with all the challenges that we face, they are committed to making sure that, the, that this U.S. military is the finest in the world.
These reviews and the push for change come as the department faces hard choices on the budget where cuts are possible, whether U.S. troops should stay or leave Afghanistan by May 1st. On COVID-19, Hicks tells CBS News that she expects the full force will have access to the vaccine by June or July. Tony. That's good news. Catherine Harris, thank you very much. It's a wonderful interview. I, yeah. I know she's describing threats and risks and challenges, but, but Kathleen, uh, Miss Hicks, the way she was describing it made me feel more at ease, actually. I was going to say she certainly seems ready for the job. I, Nina Shaw is a great lawyer in, in L.A. who says if you want to be a woman in power, then empower other women. And she seems to embody that. I like I that. Say Secretary Hicks. Yeah.